God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of the church. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers today. We hope that you have a blessed day. And remember, anyone can be a father, but to be a daddy, that's different. Our message titled today is, Self-Examination is Always Necessary. My main scripture will be from 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, which reads as follows from the King James Version. Examine your Selves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. The Bible in basic English renders it. Make a test of yourselves. If you are in the faith, make certain of yourselves. Or are you not conscious in yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, if you are truly Christ? This is a test for every one of us as born-again believers. Now, this verse has nothing to do with eternal salvation, but it has to do with whether you are truly trusting Christ and walking upright in the Christian faith. We are not to doubt our salvation in Christ, but are to trust Him in every area of our lives. And this message will be a test of your faith in Jesus Christ. There are many in the church that confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, but they always wonder whether they are truly saved. A lot of believing Christians, as soon as they commit a sin or do something wrong, lose faith in their faith in Jesus Christ. We should always be checking ourselves to see whether we are truly walking according to our faith in Jesus Christ. Today we will open up with 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 28 and 29 which reads as follows from the King James Version. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. That's verse 28. Now verse 29 in the King James Version. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. From the Good News Bible, I will read verse 28 and 29. Verse 28. So then, you should each examine yourself first, and then eat the bread and drink from the cup. Verse 29. For if you do not recognize the meaning of the Lord's body when you eat the bread and drink from the cup, you bring judgment on yourself as you eat and drink. This is powerful. This deals with the Lord's Supper, but it also deals with examining yourself and seeing whether you are walking according to the standards of the Word of God. So I chose these two scriptures as an opening for this message because it tells of the seriousness of partaking of the Lord's Supper and living in His statues. Many Christians do not take seriously their walk of salvation in Christ, but take it for granted. Beloved, you cannot say that Christ is your Savior and live any way you want. There are consequences to living a life that does not give honor to Christ. This is exactly what these two verses are dealing with. A lot of people celebrate the Lord's Supper without purifying themselves, without confessing their sins, without walking by faith in Jesus Christ. Not that they're not saved, but their lifestyle isn't right. You must purify yourself. First of all, before you take the Lord's Supper, you must repent of all your wrongdoings because you sin every day, several times a day. That doesn't mean that you're not saved, but you sin because you yield to the flesh. How many times this week have you taken the Lord's name in vain, said something wrong about somebody, gossiped about somebody, thought bad thoughts about somebody or something, looked at things that you shouldn't have looked at? You have committed sin. And how do I know? Because there was only one sinless person, and that was Jesus Christ. And that is the way that he could be the substitute for you. That is the only way he could go to the cross and become the perfect sacrifice in the eyes of God the Father. Because he was sinless. Keep that in mind whenever you partake in the Lord's Supper. Matter of fact, you should examine yourself every day. A lot of people continue to say, oh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But my beloved, it's not just saying, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. It's realizing the sins that you are committing, the sins that are against Christ, the sins that are against the Word of God. Do a self-check, a self-examination of yourself. And see if you are obedient to the word of God. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. And I will read it from the King James Version. It reads as follows. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have 
rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Check your own work. See whether what you are doing is, is honoring God. If it's not honoring God, get away from it. You must honor God and Jesus Christ. Don't rejoice in somebody else's work and try to claim it for yourself. As a Christian, you will be judged for your own work for Christ and not for the work of others. And at the same time, the work of others will not add to your merits. Let the work that you are doing for Christ line up with the Word of God and not on the say-so of others. People can tell you, oh, you're doing a fine job. You're doing a fine job. You're doing this kind of job. Oh, yeah, praise your brother. But what is God saying about your work? Are you following the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Are you doing what God has called you to do? For his praise and glory. Are you doing it for yourself? For self-praise? For the praise of others? Or are you doing it to give praise to God in the name of his son Jesus Christ? My beloved, when you labor for Christ, it should be in line with his work. And when it is, you will rejoice due to the fact that you are being a good witness for Christ. And your witness for Christ is producing fruit for the kingdom of God. Now let's go to our main verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And verse 5, and I will read it once again from the King James Version and the Bible in basic English. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. The Bible in basic English renders it, make a test of yourselves. If you are in the faith, make certain of yourselves. Or are you not conscious in yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? If you are truly Christ, my beloved, we need to sit down with the Word of God. We need to make a list. When we study the Word of God, you know, it would be nice if every day, or as often as possible, if you sit down and read the Ten Commandments from 1 to 10 and see where you line up. Number one, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any false gods or any idols before me. Where do you stand with that? What have you put before God this week? When you start with 1 and go to 10, then you will see that. Well, maybe you need to repent. Maybe you're not as a goody-goody Christian as you thought that you were. We all need to self-examine ourselves to see where we are in the faith. Now, if you're not obedient to every commandment, that doesn't mean that you're not saved. It means that maybe you need to be educated more through the Word of God. Maybe you need to be taught more. Maybe you need to pray more. Maybe you need to study the Word of God more. Maybe you need to be in church more. Maybe instead of on Sunday going fishing, you need to put your fishing rod down and go to church. There are things that you just may need to do to shorten that list on the minus side, okay? So if you're going fishing on Sunday instead of going to church, what about keeping holy the Sabbath? That's one. And I'm sure that if you go through this procedure, you will have more things on the minus side to start. But as time goes on, you'll have more things on the plus side, which will be merits for the praise and glory of God. So the words of Paul in this verse help clarify the doctrine of assurance of faith in Christ. He's asking the Corinthians to examine their own lives, not just look at everybody else and making comments on their life, but look at yourself. It's not mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most beautiful of them all? Forget that. That's a fairy tale. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Don't boast in yourself, but boast in Christ. Put yourself next to Christ. Now where do you stand? See, we can easily put ourselves next to another brother or sister, and boy, we feel good, don't we? But put yourself next to God in Christ. And where are you then? You have no reason to boast if you do that correctly. See, such evidence would include trust in Christ. Hebrews 3 and 6 says, But Christ is faithful as the Son in charge of God's house. We are His house if we keep up our courage and our confidence in what we hope for. What are you hoping for? You're hoping to go to heaven, right? So if you continually try to better yourself according to the Word of God, not according to man's expectation of what it means to be better, then you will have confidence that when you leave this life, you will be with your Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. 
along with trust is obedience to God. And this is, this is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, which says, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. Everybody was calling Jesus, Lord, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, we'll follow you. But let me go first and uh, bury my father, or let me do this, or let me go check out my wife, or my farm, or my kids or whatever. Christ wasn't first, but they called him Lord. So do you think that that person really was in Christ? There are many people that called Jesus Lord when he walked in, in amongst the crowds. When he healed people, they called him Lord. Then when Pilate said, who do you want me to release on this special day? They wanted Barabbas, an insurrectionist, a murderer over Christ. So see how it changed? They called him Lord one week, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the end of the week, they said, crucify him. My beloved, there will be people that will build you up one week and tear you down the next week. As preachers, I preach messages. Oh, great message this week. Next week, they didn't like the message. Depended on the content of the message, the subject of the message. You know, it used to be where they had the marquee out in front of the church and they put on there what the message is going to be about this week. If it talked about hell, everybody went on vacation. <laughs> That they weren't in church that Sunday. You talked about blessings, everybody was in church. You can't have it both ways. The way to be blessed is to do the will of the Father in Christ Jesus. As Christians, we must also grow in holiness. And the writer of Hebrews notes this in Hebrews chapter 12, and verse 14, which says, Try to be at peace with everyone and try to live a holy life because no one will see the Lord without it. Don't expect to treat people bad and say you're a Christian. How can you? What about love the Lord your God with everything that you have in you and love your neighbor? What about that? You hate your neighbor and you say you love God? You need to check yourself to see where you are spiritually. My beloved, we must walk in purity. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure, just as Christ is pure. In these last days, my beloved, we are bombarded with impure things. It's hard to stay focused on God at times. You're bombarded by what you hear, what you see, what's going on out there in the world. You're bombarded. It's like, wow, you get in the state of confusion. You don't know what to think. You worry about tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. It'll take care of itself. Take care of things today. Where are you today? Don't say, I'm going to get better tomorrow. You may not ever see tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Where are you today? Forget tomorrow. It's not promised to you. Where are you today in Christ? Are you in or out? You have one foot in the kingdom or one foot in the world? Where are you today? Only you can answer that. Examine yourself. Another area of self-examination is in the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 reads, But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. So how do you line up? How do you fare in these areas? Do you love? Do you have joy? Do you have peace? Do you have patience? That's one that we all need to work on. Kindness? Goodness? Are you faithful? Are you humble? Do you exercise self-control? When you're tempted, do you exercise self-control? Only you can answer that. Read this verse over and examine yourself. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23 and see where you line up. My beloved, if you judge yourself now, you won't have to worry about being judged when you leave this life because you would have been walking in the love of God. You would have been walking according to the word of God. You will have more merits than demerits. What do you want when you stand at the uh, beam of judgment or the judgment seat of Christ? You want more rewards or less rewards? You want more rewards? Read Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 and see where you line up. I can't express that enough. So in closing, I want to mention the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which lives in every true Christian or every born-again believer. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 and 16 reads, For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power, we cry to God, Father, Father, or Abba, Father, what it says in the King James. You see, God's Spirit joins Himself to our spirits to declare that 
we are God's children. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be saved. And therefore, you cannot walk in power and properly discern good from evil because you will only discern the things of the flesh, which is enmity against God, period. Without Christ in your life, you have no Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do what is right. Now, you may have good moral character, but that will not get you to heaven. There are people that give to this, give to that, give to that. You can't give your way to heaven. You can only get to heaven by faith in Jesus Christ, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the only way you can get to heaven. Not to a church, not to a preacher, not because somebody else is saved in your family. You cannot get to heaven any other way but through Jesus Christ. My beloved, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit as being true believers in Christ. If you keep on wondering about your salvation, your salvation, you need to stop and think and read the Word of God and see where you line up. Have you fully repented? Are you truly trusting Christ for your salvation? Or are you trusting the world? You're trusting your own goodness. What are you trusting to get you to heaven? If it's anything but Jesus Christ, you are not going to heaven, but you are going to hell, which leads you to the lake of fire and brimstone, period. I know that I'm saved. I know I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I know he is my Savior and Lord. I never wonder where I'm going to go when I leave this life, because the word of God would I trust in as being true, tells me that I am in Jesus Christ and I am going to heaven. What about you? Where are you going? I don't care what church you go to. You will not get to heaven through that church. I don't care who your pastor is. You won't get to heaven through your pastor. It is only through Jesus Christ as being your Savior and Lord will you get to heaven. My beloved, it is only through the Holy Spirit and the testimony of a good conscience through Jesus Christ. And this is exactly why we as Christians can rejoice and be victorious in our Christian walk. Because we know and we have faith and we have peace and we practice what we preach, that we will go to heaven when we leave this life. So my beloved, take time to examine yourself today as to where you are in your Christian faith in Christ. What level are you? Are you still on the milk of the word? Or have you graduated to the meeting? One day in church on Sunday will not aid in your growth in Christ. If you're not praying, you're not reading the word of God, if you're not a Bible study, it is impossible, impossible, for you to grow. The Holy Spirit takes what's in you and confirms it. If there's nothing in you, nothing in, nothing out. Think about it today. Do a true self-examination of yourself according to the Word of God and see where you are in the faith. I want to meet you in a prayer to receive Christ as your Savior Lord today. If you would like to do so, you must repent of your sins, believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. And is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. If you have any doubts about your salvation, you can repent today and know beyond a reasonable doubt and have confidence that you are truly in Christ. And if you want to do that today, please pray with me as I pray this model prayer of salvation in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner, or I don't know if I'm really saved or not. But I want to make sure today, I want to go to heaven when I die. And today is my day to examine myself. I want to make sure that when I leave this life, I will be with you in heaven and not with Satan in the lake of fire. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the anointed one. He is the one that died for my sins and who only through what he did on Calvary can I have salvation and go to heaven when I die. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I believe beyond a reasonable doubt right now because I am repenting in truth that Jesus Christ has become my Savior and Lord. And I thank you for saving me today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the peace knowing that I have become a Christian today. And I thank you for saving me. 
And I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today and meant it from your heart, you shall have no doubt that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to give you a Bible if you haven't one, and ask him to mentor you. You may grow in the faith. And what else I want you to do is to contact me at Abundant.Grace at att.net. I'd like to hear from you. You can Google me, Bishop Ramon Di Maria, or you can just Google Abundant Grace Church. You can contact us through our website, www.abundantgracechurchofmelothian, or our other website, abundantgraceofmelothian.com. Thank you, my beloved, for being with us today. Remember to self-examine yourself today according to the Ten Commandments. And once again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. God bless you and go with God.